Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Let's say you're moving into a new house or office and you need to have a network there. With all the available options right now, which one is right for you? Well, if you want to save some money, you could just bring the networking equipment from wherever you came from, but we're NCIX and we think you should probably buy some new stuff, especially if you're still running like ancient wireless G or N gear. You want to step up to AC. So today we're going to look at a couple of the most popular options. One that's actually popular, wireless AC, and one that's not popular even though it should be, power line networking. So we'll be covering the pros and cons of each of them. I want this pose to be the thumbnail. Now the fastest, most stable, and reliable configuration will be a direct ethernet cable from device to device. However, that's not always possible, or at least not always convenient, especially when you need the network across a building or on a different floor or whatever else. And that's where these two options come in. One relies on wirelessly transmitting the data through the air, while the other utilizes the power lines in your building, hence the name power line, to act as, a, well, basically a, a copper link, so it's taking the place of an ethernet cable. Both of these options will allow you to share internet, files, printers, uh, stream media, and all the good stuff that you can do on any normal network. So, in this corner, we have the TrendNet Powerline 500 AV kit. It comes with two adapters, two ethernet cables, and the software CD that, for whatever reason, like, remember when monitors used to come with software disks? What is on these disks? I don't know. I never put one in a drive. Maybe you know. It's a mystery. Anyway, this is capable of a theoretical maximum throughput of 62.5 megabytes per second or 500 megabit. It'll work on any 110 volt power outlets on the same electrical system and it's ridiculously easy to set up. Connect your source device such as your modem or switch to one adapter, plug that into any wall outlet, then plug in the other adapter to another wall outlet and then connect the final device such as a, you know, connected TV or a computer or whatever else. You can even add additional power line adapters to the same network if you need more ports. The one drawback here is that they do act as a hub as opposed to a switch. So the more you add, the less theoretical uh, resources are available for each of the ones that are there. Now, the advantage of power line is the same as a wired connection. You will have a more stable connection with less chance of random disconnections or lost packets. Power line units are also pretty affordable. The one here is currently around 70 bucks. However, there are some downsides. The signal strength depends on the quality of your wiring so in a very old building you might not get the high speeds you're expecting and determining the electrical circuits in your building and whether two outlets you use are connected in any way may also be a little bit challenging although I found that most quality power line kits will jump pretty pretty reasonably well finally the maximum theoretical bandwidth is much lower than wireless AC but more on that later in the other corner we have the D-Link DIR 880L wireless AC dual band router it features three powerful antennas I mean look how big they are three powerful antennas simultaneous 5 gigahertz and 2 giga 2.4 gigahertz dual band frequencies AC smart beam technology which focuses wireless signals towards connected devices and USB 3 for storage and sharing. There's the usual security features, including the murder Tron, which is going to be thrown at wheels right now. Thank you, wheels. There's the usual security features, including WPA, WPA2, and WPS, and it does support the backwards compatible older 802.11 standards N, G, B, and A, with a very comprehensive software suite and features, such as remote file access outside of the network, so kind of like personal cloud thing, guest internet usage, and even throttling. Now, the obvious advantage here is that your network is wireless, which allows connecting devices such as tablets, smartphones, ultrabooks, digital cameras, or any other thing that doesn't happen to have an ethernet port. The theoretical maximum transfer speed is also much higher at 1900 megabit per second or 237.5 megabytes per second. Setup is pretty straightforward and our router came pre-configured out of the box with a handy little card showing you all the information you need. A powerful router though is quite a bit more expensive than just adding a power line thing. Obviously you can add more devices with it, but at 190 bucks you could buy a couple of these kits before making up for a new router. However,
if you're in a very dense area, such as you know an office complex or a high-rise apartment or anywhere with a lot of other wireless networks, particularly if you're using 2.4 gigahertz, you might run into trouble. But if you want to use 5 gigahertz, you might find that you need a new wireless router anyway, especially if you just want to be able to access Facebook and download files from time to time on your phone because 5 gigahertz is not nearly as congested. So in an apartment building, the example I gave before, you might find that after you go and buy a power line adapter, you're still going to need a new router anyhow. Just watch out for those security settings. You don't want other people accessing your precious files and all that. Now, theoretical measurements are fine and dandy, but here at NCIX, of course, Anthony's going to put them to the test. Now, if your device has wireless AC already, then that's great. You're probably going to get better performance. You're not going to have like tumors hanging out of your devices and all of that. But if it doesn't, then we suggest either adding a PCI Express card or a USB adapter or something like that. So for our basic AC test, so we're looking at kind of worst case scenario here, we use the D-Link DWA-182. It's a dual band AC USB adapter. It is USB 2, so it's not necessarily the fastest adapter out there. But the good news is it's only about 50 bucks. So Anthony tested the internet speed using speedtest.net and then checked the network quality using ADA32's network analysis plugin. So looking at average use case scenarios, such as being beside the modem in the same room kind of thing, 30 meters away in a very large room, upstairs in the same building, so we're actually punching through objects, and then outside the baseline, by the way on the graphs is the wired connection, and Anthony observed that on speed test anyway, he was able to consistently achieve the maximum of the internet connection here. So about 50 megabytes per second down and five megabytes per second up with even better results achievable in IDA32. So that's 87.6 megabytes per second. As expected, the wireless AC connection gave pretty consistent connections inside, but where things got a little bit flaky was actually outside the studio. So whether it's the metal door or whatever else the case may be, it basically dropped off the moment we went outside. That's the thing about wireless, is sometimes it's not predictable. There's no real reason why it would just go from completely everything to nothing for going through one wall necessarily, unless it's like lined with lead, which I don't believe that it is. But sometimes these things just happen. Moving on to power line. The speeds were overall slower, but also produced very consistent results throughout the building. So the IDA32 test clearly shows the strength degradation when both adapters were connected to the same UPS. We have a good speed that matches wireless IC. You see, however, when you go you know, through a bunch of different wires in the building, it can drop by as much as 50%. Now, Powerline adapters are a good low-cost solution for expanding your network for a small number of devices. However, Wi-Fi has come a long way, is now very stable with more features that you can shake a stick at, so ultimately, the best solution for you is going to depend on the devices you're planning to use as well as the topology of your building. One thing to bear in mind, for Powerline especially, is that ping times, even though transfer rates might not be that fast, can be much more consistent, a factor if you're a gamer. One last thing, guys, by the way, we're giving away a D-Link DIR 880L. All you gotta do is be subscribed and comment below for your chance to win. Let us know your experience with Powerline or wireless AC in which you prefer. And don't worry, if you haven't tried either of them, just make something up for a chance to win. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and all of that great stuff.